Welcome back to the broadcast. This is Inside Politics. Thank you for staying with us. Now, President Uru Kenyatta has nominated four commissioners to fill the vacant positions of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC. The president nominated Francis Wanderi, Justice Zabonio, Juliana Cherera, and Irene Chorop for the IEBC Commission of Slots. The names have, been, uh, have already been submitted to Parliament where the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee will vet them and either approve or reject their nominations. The four will fill the vacant positions left after the resignation of uh, Rosalina Kombe, Margaret Mwachanya, Paul Kurgat, and Connie Miner. The National Assembly is expected to vet the four and table a report within 28 days. If approved, the IABC will be fully constituted after three years of operations with just the chairman and two commissioners. All right, um, let's talk about Kenya's readiness for the next general election, which is 366 days away. Let me begin with you, Rosalind. Um, of course, as we prepare as the fourth estate to cover this uh, important election, Kenya's biggest election yet it will be, um, what is your take on readiness of Kenya as a country uh, all round for the 2022 election? Uh, thank you, Ben. If you review so far what is happening, I think there are still a number of challenges. Uh, but the fact that the government <coughs> is moving in to fully constitute the commission a year to the general election is good because if you confirm uh, in 2017, the commissioners were recruited in January and the elections were in August. So they didn't have enough time to familiarize themselves with the process. And two, even the elections law were passed the latest, just some months to the elections. So I think if you look at this time round, uh, the chairman and the two commissioners have been in office, and I think they've been planning uh, towards the election. But still, we have some challenges because if you come to parliament, there are three crucial laws that are still before the house that need to be fast tracked. Tomorrow is exactly one year to the elections. We have the referendum bill that is before the House. We have the IBC amendment bill that mm -hmm. is before the House that seeks to give guidelines for boundary delimitation. And then also we have the elections law that is before Parliament and also the Elections Campaign Financing Act of 2013 that IBC had proposed amendments. But now the IBC has actually submitted regulations based on the elections law of 2013 that if fast tracked, then it will implement and give uh, the cap on how much MPs uh, or uh, people seeking elective positions can raise. Yes. Now that is just one of it. There is also the issue of um, uh, finances. Uh, you've heard the IBC talking about resources. They are saying so far now, in this budget, they are getting 15 billion. Uh, remember, they have not been doing mass voter registration. They are targeting to register 4 million Kenyans. From 2018 to now, they have only registered 147,000, which is a very lo uh, low number mm -hmm. if you compare with the census of 2019. Then there is also the issue of now procurement of ballot papers and all that. Uh, you saw the other day IBC put up an advert uh, for international tenders uh, for the same, so that is also going through. And then tomorrow, as we start the countdown, we are, we are starting the countdown when people are uncertain over the fate of the BBI process uh, that the Court of Appeal is supposed to rule on the 20th. Yes. Uh, which if it rules in favor of the pro, uh, promoters, then it is also seeking to create additional 70 constituencies, which I don't know if it will happen within that time, because according to IBC, the earliest they can create constituencies is 2023. Okay. So now that is another challenge. Now, if you look at the MPs themselves and the formations and the people declaring their positions, you can see they are littered and scattered all over. Apart from the deputy president who has been on course from 2017 after the general election, even from the ODM side, they have not declared who is their presidential candidate. Uh, we have the ANC president, uh, we have the WIPA leader, uh, Kalonzo, 
uh, coming up to form the One Kenya Alliance. But they are still also having uh, a, a standoff with the NASA, the Na uh, Na uh, National Super Alliance, where they sought to seek a divorce. But you see already there is a stop uh, where Ford Kenya factions are fighting. Yes. And also ODM has not deposited their instrument to seek officially that they are quitting. So as we sit, we are still waiting for the registrar to tell us if NASA is dead or not. So you can see all this as we start the countdown, the country is still not prepared for the elections. All right. So a lot of balls in the air, like uh, Rosny is telling us there. Um, Dismas, what stands out for you? Let's, let's talk about the, the IBC uh, for a moment. Uh, it is now fully constituted. It will be fully constituted if uh, the names, the four names uh, nominated, uh, forwarded to parliament by the president are approved. But somebody was raising an issue of two-thirds gender rule. Does it, does it have a problem for you? Do you have a problem with that? Well, obviously, I don't have a, a problem with that because what we'd be looking for at uh, IBC, in my view, is uh, top talent. And IBC is the weakest link and possibly, one can argue, a threat to our national security. And you cannot start discussing IBC today if you don't go back to 2017. You remember the Supreme Court indicated that uh, the presidential elections were marred by illegalities and irregularities. Mm -hmm. The then DPP, which now CS for Environment, said that they were going to proceed with the investigations and bring uh, culprits or suspects to book. As we have this conversation, nothing has happened. So when the Supreme Court indicated that there were illegalities and irregularities, nobody has pronounced himself from IBC that these are the issues the Supreme Court pronounced and we have sorted them out. That is number one. On the same note, the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, gave an order on the matter of the server that can we look at this server, what kind of an animal is this? As we have this conversation, the server has no surface. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why Kenya gets into trouble every five years is for some reason, part of Kenya does not believe in the results, especially the presidential ones, as pronounced by IBC. And that's why I say that that's a recipe for a national crisis. That is a threat to our national security. And in my view, IBC must come up, as we've said, times above number on this show. They need to give us predictable systems for unpredictable outcomes. They haven't done that. And then secondly, the people who are being interviewed for this role, mm -hmm. they, and I paid close attention. At some stage, I was required to serve myself an energy drink because they did not seem to understand the basics of uh, even running an election. Some of them do not know the qualifications for somebody to become a, a presidential candidate or somebody to be stopped from becoming a presidential candidate. Granted, they may not be lawyers like my colleagues here, but one would imagine that if you want to be a commissioner of an electoral body, you need to socialize with the, the basics. Now, given all that uh, picture, in my view, Mr. Chebukati and company have not inspired confidence that they've created those predictable systems for unpredictable outcomes. Some people say the systems are there, but there's no political <coughs> will to have faith in them and have the nation have faith in those uh, structures. Now, if we separate issues, politics and the systems, can he at least make Mora understand that these are the systems we've created and now we're waiting for political will to go to the next level? Okay. Because one of the campaign tools used by Tangatanga -tanga architects and psychophants is they keep on asking uh, Raila Odinga, that will you accept the outcome of uh, this election? We, nobody wants to go to this election saying that uh, if I'm going to cast my ballot, it may not count. The person who will count is the person right. who's counting it. And what Obala has indicated of these horrible registration numbers, less than 200,000, mm -hmm. it could be a result okay. of IBC that uh, right. your vote may not count. I want to pick it, Javas, from where uh, uh, Dismas left and decided that uh, from 2017, there were issues that were raised by from, from the petition, the, the irregularities and, 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 and those things, that they were not um, dealt with. Mm -hmm. Instead, <coughs> what came was the BBI process, the handshake and the BBI, and it seems that Kenyans forgot about the other issues that were raised. Are you content that, that uh, the issues that happened in 2017 will not happen again? My relative uh, Mokua speaks well though he suffers slight amnesia on some things that I want to speak to. 
Ours is a stubborn refusal to adhere to the rule of law and facts and common sense that leads us to common good as a nation in growing our democracy. Look, when you look at IBC, the question to me and where I sit in this chair this morning is not whether IBC is prepared to conduct the election. The question is whether the government is intentionally making IBC unprepared to conduct the election. That is the issue. Because, and as factually as Mokua has spoken, the issues that were pronounced by the Supreme Court remain undealt with. Secondly, we have seen the determination by the leading politicians in this country to ensure that IBC and issues of electoral reforms are not handled within the subsistence of uh, Jubilee's second term. Mm -hmm. Today, as we speak, IBC commissioners who quit after the election, or during that period of the impasse, of the impasse, IBC has remained without sufficient number of commissioners for about three years or so. What stopped the recruitment of commissioners back then? Today, as I sit in this chair, IBC does not have a chief executive officer after the unceremonious uh, ouster of Ezra Chiloba. The issue of commissioners being in office arises, and it will be possibly fully constituted, possibly improperly constituted, but fully constituted after all, after parliament vets the four. Mm -hmm. if, but, yes. yes of course it's going to be. <laughs> the other thing is, are we going to an election without a CEO for IBC? What has stopped the recruitment of a chief executive officer for uh, the IBC for the entire period since the exit of Ezra Chiloba? The other thing is this, that with regard to IBC's demand to be sufficiently resourced to conduct civic education, to conduct voter registration, that is supposed to be constant, has not been done then we'll gather in the compound of uh, the frightened meek fellows and point fingers at IBC and say the commissioners and the secretariat has failed. Why are we lying to ourselves? The other thing is this. In the current circumstances of the global, the novel global pandemic that COVID-19 is, yes. is IBC sufficiently prepared to conduct a proper, credible, fair, transparent election in the face of the pandemic? We need to have IBC uh, uh, generate regulations that will guide how it will conduct a comprehensive civic ed education, voter education pro uh, process, because it is its mandate. Mm -hmm. How, for example, the issue of the MOH protocols are going to affect the time of a single mm -hmm. voter in a polling booth right. and the extent to which that is going to affect the election itself, the process itself. IBC has not demonstrated its readiness, working of course jointly with other stakeholders such as the Ministry of Health, uh, the Ministry of Interior, okay. etc., to make sure that as early as now, in the face of COVID-19, it is properly prepared to conduct that election. All right. My conclusion therefore is that IBC is being sabotaged by key operatives in government, by politicians themselves. We do not have to wait uh, for a determination and we didn't have to wait until August 20th uh, to have IBC prepared to conduct an election. Today, for example, in the circumstance that the Court of Appeal gives a nod uh, for a referendum to be conducted, yes. is IBC sufficiently prepared, resource-wise, materially, financially, etc., to conduct a referendum, whether before or even concurrently with the general election. All right. These are issues that are very important to us. Article 89 of the Constitution also arises. The issue of having uh, new constituency boundaries is not a matter of life and death. We know very well that Article 89 provides that IBC must conduct a review of the boundaries between 8 and 12 years. Yes. 12 years lapse in 2023. IBC must not have a gun held to his head to conduct a review of the boundaries just before this general election. All right. We must therefore say that over the past 25 years, factually speaking, mm -hmm. the issue of international right, human rights law regarding election and electoral processes have evolved. Evolved in such a manner that it makes them practical, All right. commonsensical, and in fact the people themselves and our politics needs to grow to the extent that we enable our democracy grow. Democracy does not grow or move forward on the wheels of inevitability. All right.
Kipchumba, we, we always seem as a country to be pushing the Electoral Commission against the wall. In, 20, in the run-up to the 2017 election, there was the, 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 the protest by the, the court coalition then to have IBC removed, and it was removed and, and changed. Uh, after the election, there were issues again with the IBC and how it, it conducted the election. But now, we haven't had such because of the handshake and because of the BBI process, which we will know on the, on the 20th of August what, what way it will be going. Maybe you're an insider uh, in the judicial system, maybe you know, but what is your crystal ball telling you about how come things have been, even though like Javas and Disma say, those issues raised by the Supreme Court back then have not been addressed? They have not been addressed because we, we do not run a country that uh, we run what we call transactional politics. You win this election, it is your issue to serve this term, eat whatever you eat and steal whatever you steal and go. If the next election comes, Java beats you, you battle with him in court if you get, that is the nature of politics we do. But what we must stress, and there is something that has continuously been done, either actively or passively. There are people within government who are hell-bent in trying. They don't, want to know, they don't want to see the election. And that is why for the longest time you have had people saying early campaigns. There is nothing like early campaigns, Ben, mm -hmm. or all these things. The, all the dabragadabra you see here are people who don't want Uru Kenyatta to go home on the, on the 9th of October next year. And that is why we have had elements like Atwoli saying Uru is still young. It is from those ideas of Uru being young that people want to sabotage IBC from, and they may want to look to make to paint IBC look so bad. The first question you need to ask yourself: Why haven't we implemented? There was a decision. I think that the court of appeal about the diaspora voters. We have done nothing about it, Ben. Elections. We are now into the year of elections. We have done nothing about the issue of registration of voters in the diaspora mm -hmm. and activating that particular article, article 89 or is it 888, or that allows diaspora people to take part in our election. Number two, we have not taken stock of the reasons why the election was annulled in the last general election. Nobody has told us IBC and the, 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 the jailer. Agenda points to that. No, 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 no. Leave alone the nine agenda. Those are political conveniences. We are talking about a court of jurisdiction sitting down and annulling an election. We are not talking about two politicians having convenience and agreeing. Because if we talk about the nine agenda mm -hmm. tomorrow, this mass Moku and Uru Kenyatta will have, and William Ruta will have a discussion and come up with the four agenda, and we'll be told why don't you discuss that one also. What we need to ask ourselves. For example, something basic like the, what we call that thing, the server. Why don't we agree that for transparency sake, mm -hmm. accredit observers, accredit media houses, mm -hmm. allow media houses and international observers mm -hmm. a chance to access the server. What is in this server that it is so cardinal that we might not allow other people to access? The second point is this. There has always been an attempt to make the ill-preparedness of politicians to be the ill-preparedness of IBC. We have no business in making politicians be ready for elections. All we want is IBC to be in a state that it can do an election. Whether politicians are ready or not, they will lose and life will continue. But if we were to sit here and say, let us wait for politicians to be ready, we might never have elections. But asking the other question which ought to be asked is the issue of, are we setting up IBC to fail? And I will say the answer is yes, because in the next two weeks, my crystal ball tells me that there is somebody who will go to court and try to say that the court declares IBC unconstitutional because the commissioners in the commissioners is currently do not meet the two-third. Yeah. But when you go to other decisions that have been made by court, the two-third is not made about the commission at the top. It is looking at IBC holistically as an institution. Okay. Does it adhere to the two-thirds? So that we do not want bright people who want to subvert the rule of law to come That's and That's a start. possibility though, right? Somebody yes. will go to court. Yes. I can tell you that for a fact. Okay. Kenyans are known to be litigious, which also helps us grow the democracy. Okay. If we are not litigated on so many issues, yes. we will not be where we are as a nation. Okay. Rosalind, what is your take on, on, on what Disma said earlier there? Actually, uh, Ben, let us start with this, that elections is not on the voting day. 
elections is a process. And that's why if you look at the curricular reports, it was talking about 20 months, 24 months to the elections. We should be able to have all the systems in place. Now, we are talking about this issue of server. Have we taken our time to look at the IBC post-election review reports that is before Parliament that has actually tackled the issue of the server on page 94? We have never looked at that, yet the political parties that were involved were all given this information. So we have allowed politicians to run away with this matter without holding them to account and telling them what did they really get and where were they dissatisfied. Now, when we talk about the issue of the court nullifying the elections and saying there were irregularities, there are some laws that are holding the hands of either IBC mm -hmm. or the institutions that are supposed to rein in on election violators. Now, if you look at the Elections Offences Act and even the NCIC Act, they, they are not so tight that they can actually hold people to account and even block people. That is why you see uh, the NCIC will call out politicians but will never see any prosecutions. The same time during elections, IBC will actually find some politicians and call them out, but it ends there. We are not able to block everybody because they have to exhaust all the legal avenues for you to be able to say that now you can act on somebody. Now, all this boils down to what the MPs are doing in Parliament. Because who are the people who are supposed to legislate? They are the MPs. They are the same, same people who will be going back to the public to seek the votes. So they are the people, uh, when uh, Bigambo talked about the sabotage, this is where we begin it. All because right. which institution allocate funds to IBC and the others, it's parliament. Now, from 2018 to now, IBC has been saying they've only been getting recurrent allocation. Now, when you give them recurrent, how will they do public uh, education? How will they do mass voter registration? So that is why we find ourselves here one year to election, and is when we are talking about all these processes to be fast track within just 12 months to elections. All right. Thank you for that. Dismas. Do you believe that the IBC is being set up to fail, sabotaged, as it were? Well, that probability does exist. Mm -hmm. And if indeed it's uh, accurate, then it's incumbent on uh, IBC commissioners yes. and the secretariat and the staffers to immunize IBC from this uh, sabotage. It's not sufficient for, for us to have that conversation that there is a possibility of sabotage if the people who have been given the constitutional mandate are mama about it. They need to go to the top of Mount Kenya as soon as uh, this afternoon and make that noise so that everybody appreciates if there's a probability of uh, sabotage. That is number one. Then uh, number two, we have not addressed ourselves to the issue of uh, the cost of uh, elections uh, in Kenya. It's still up there as to why Kenya has probably got the most expensive uh, process. We also need to address that issue. And then third, I'm not aware of anybody in Kenya who's been uh, committed to criminal jail because of an electoral offense. Yet we've had so many petitions from MCA all the way to the top, but there's nobody behind bars. So one keeps wondering, okay. how come there are so many offenses, but nobody has been found guilty of anything? There are no offenders. Now, what that means, is that as we go to 2022, mm -hmm. the people running IBC, they know that they can actually make mistakes with alacrity, they can assault the process, mm -hmm. and they will dance to the bank. And they, they are going to be bribed by politicians, and there will be no, there'll be no penalties for that. Either a pecuniary penalties. A lot of penalties. nothing will happen to them. Yeah, I, I do know mm -hmm. that gives those people. I mean, you, you recall uh, during the last election when. Uh, NASA were asking very pertinent questions, and essentially Chebukati and his friend Shilova were flipping the bird on uh, the NASA principles. You know, that attitude in Kenya, Mutadu, we need to have the fear of the law for those commissioners. Right. Actually, it would be a nice idea if you've got maybe a commissioner behind bars, a, you know, a senior staffer, so that people understand. The same way we cannot win uh, the fight against corruption if you don't have the architects behind bars. Right. The, these architects who are planning to sabotage the elections, assuming what the two lawyers are saying is accurate, All right. so, in my view, if you go through the law properly, mm. 
there must be an offense. So much the election offenses to the offenders. I have to ask this real quick, uh, Javas. We've had suggestions about having an arrangement like the IPPG of 1997, the inter parties parliamentary group. Uh, when we had, and that also led to the way the, I, the, the, the ECK then was constituted, the political parties nominating members. And some people argue that that was one of the most credible elections that we've had in this country. We've, so there, are so, there are still so many balls in the air, the BBI and, and, and the ruling and that, that, that bill in Parliament. Is that a possibility for you? Our penchant for innovating outside the law is uh, something that calls for a global award. I think reminiscent of the sentiment and the quip of Chinua Achebe that we like standing in the compound of the coward and pointing fingers where the brave man used to live, I would say that here we fail so much to point fingers to the right direction most of the time. <clears throat> the issue of the IPPG call, uh, or something similar to that, is something that politicians are now devising or have devised in the past few months. But let's ask ourselves, what is the test for a credible election? The credibility of an election is not determined by the persons who sit and oversee an election alone. Much as it matters the integrity of the persons who conduct an election, if at all, we were to examine the kind of statutes that we have and regulations that we have, you would say that we are one of those countries that have got nearly sufficient statutes and regulation mm -hmm. on matters elections. But we like circumventing these regulations for personal gain, especially politicians. Mm -hmm. When you look at South Africa, for instance, when you look at Ghana, when you look at the kind of statutes that they have to do with elections, cannot be compared to ours. Mm -hmm. So let's face it, All right. whatever kind of arrangements that we have, IPPG kind of, and saying that you see when parties nominate, it must not be in the place of parties to nominate persons who serve their interests in an election body. We must have persons who are Kenyans who put patriotism and integrity first. But I would be the devil's advocate. We've had a constitutional commission, that is the IBC, uh, conduct the past two elections. Mm -hmm. And there have been a fuss so to speak. I mean, people were always uh, uh, saying this has not been done, that IBC has bungled the election, you did this but election. Ben, ben. You see, yes. just a minute. I'll come after to after 2007, yes. post-election malaise, mm -hmm. didn't we hoist the Krigler report like our flag yes. and say that now the Krigler you know, uh, uh, report has given us the compass that will guide us Roadmap. Uh, okay. on, on various issues. Okay. But to what extent have we disregarded the Krigler report to what extent have we even disregarded our constitution and various election regulations right. the same way an errant child okay. will disregard Give the Chumba. mother's milk? Give me your thoughts on that. There is a problem and it is a, a, a political problem that we need to sort. It is not a legal problem. Ben, we have always innovated the best laws in terms of politics. We have even gone to an extent of saying the ele our elections are the final results are announced at the polling station. Why? To curb the bombers manipulation or the national turning center manipulation. But what the, 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 the amount of uh, suckers we go through is the candidates. You cannot immunize our electoral process because the people in this country, there are candidates who have made up their mind that Elections are only free and fair when they win. Look at it this way, even the, the, the kicks and, the, and, the, and the, the punches given by NASA people and court, they only say elections are only bungled at the last box. The other five are free and fair because they have people who have won these elections. Even when they are complaining, they had Senator Wetangula as a senator. They couldn't say my election was unfair because I won. So we must also have the sportsmanship, and it is good we are having this show no. at the end of an Olympic, where people lose and they greet each other, they hug and go home. That is what we must, if we do not inculcate the spirit in our politicians that an election has two outcomes, you either win or lose. But the problem is that we have put so much premium in politics, we have put so much premium in power that if somebody loses power, yeah. it is the end of their life. Right. The other thing why that happens is because we do not have or we have not enforced the election financing laws so that this Mas Mokua sells his house which is 800 million worth in Mombasa. 
He comes and invested in an election. He is thoroughly taken to the cleaners by the competitor. He wakes up one morning and realizes, I, have not, I don't have the building and I don't have the election. <laughs> right. What does he do? He collects all his tribesmen and goes to the streets. Yes. So at the end of the day, <laughs> we are forced to come and negotiate with Didmas. Okay. The other problem I have with all these election problems, and it, <laughs> this must <laughs> move The other problem I have with all these elections yeah. is that over time, we have awarded people who have been rejected by the ballots. How did we award them? And this, this Mas Moku again is talking about we have electoral offenses, but we don't have the electoral offenders. Look at it this way. We allowed Raila Odinga to go to bo th that place, Urupak, swear himself in, and come and say he's negotiating with a duly sworn in president. That is where the problem is. Right. We have allowed people <laughs> okay. to walk out with so, crimes. But, but, right. Let me buttress on the issue of the property talks about in Mombasa, which is a very good <laughs> dream that I have. But <laughs> the two important points. We really have to go on. Yeah, yeah, just a second. Break. This is very important. South Africa faced with the question you are asking whether we are ready. Yeah. They requested a retired chief justice, deputy chief justice. Mosineke was come up with a report and said, with the current environment of uh, COVID, it's unlikely that they're going to have a free, fair, nor credible election. Now, the IBC has gone to a constitutional court to establish whether or not they can go ahead with the election. And the issue you raise about uh, IPPG, it's a successful success in Israel because Israel realizes the biggest stakeholder in an election mm -hmm. is the political party and the political leaders. All right. So the IBC is informed and influenced okay. by the political parties, right. which I think may be a good idea. Then, as we discuss, as we discuss, as we discuss about, as we as we discuss, as we discuss, as we discuss about COVID, the world in England has allowed has allowed fans to come to the field. Are we going? We cannot. No, 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 Ben. We cannot. We cannot use our COVID to help NASA politicians or other politicians to get ready. If they are not ready, they can compete. It is a political problem, not a legal <laughs> one. That is, that is a, a good uh, bombshell to go on a quick commercial break. Con, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we shall be winding up on this and, of course, talking about the uh, breakup of the National Super Alliance. Uh, is that the final nail on the coffin, as they say, uh, after the three political parties signed the exit pact? Stay with us. News.